Right. Okay, I would please like to call Monday, November 18, 2024, our city council meeting to order at 7 p.m. I'll rise for Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Um, tonight, all counselors uh, are here except Marissa Jacobs is excused absence. Had a chance to look at the agenda today. Um, looking for a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Jeremy, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Councilor Hall makes a motion to approve of the agenda as presented. Any seconds? Second. Second by Council President Miller. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor state by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Um, we are now at the section of public comment. Do we have public comment? Okay, we do have public comment. Then this is the place on the agenda where public is invited to speak to council regarding any matter not on the agenda and not scheduled for a public hearing. Members of the public addressing council are requesting either name and city resident. Please not, try not to repeat questions or to allow for more speakers. Speakers are to limit their testimony to five minutes as we are limited to 30 minutes total. Um, JJ, if you would like to step up to the plate. JJ Durad Scapus. Um, anyway, I just uh, was here last time uh, expecting some other folks to be here. Now they are. So I'm very excited about that. Um, first off, uh, the all the events we did this year went extremely well. Uh, I was kind of surprised. I worked really hard at it, but so did a lot of other people. And, um, and that's kind of why I'm here. Um, I wanted to uh, uh, start out. I have awards. And I think that's important. Mayor Joe Backus was at every event just doing anything he could to help, which was really helpful when we did the uh, outdoor festival because I was literally a chicken with my head cut off. So, you know, he helped us get people in place and, and you know, all the booze and it was really successful, but he's been at every event and just really has just helped a great deal. So Joe, thank you so much for your service and helping the community. So oh, I've also got, and I forgot yours. Oh, this. this young man did an amazing job. He did the, uh, we wanted to do something really cool for the outdoor festival. So we had this campfire storytelling booth. And he basically, you know, got the stories. It was really engaging, it was hugely successful. So let's hear it for our amazing storyteller, who I will bring an award next week, next time. Dave Johnson. Thank you, Angie. Thank you so much. Um, also uh, wanted to thank Tyler Miller. He showed up at almost every event. He also really helped us out a lot. Um, so Tyler, you've just been a great leader and I just wanted to thank you so much for all your help with the events this year. Another four years. Woo. Oh, and we have one of my favorite girls. <laughs> are you like, are you still going now? Or is that a good <laughs> I'm a humble public servant. <laughs> <laughs> so we, last year was our eighth year of doing movies in the park. Um, and it really was great. You know, Kim's also a big help too. So thank you so much, Kim, for everything you do. But the police department, you know, years ago, I really wanted to engage the police department because I think it's really important that our police are out in the community in a really positive way. 
And there's few better ways to do that than giving away free stuff and dollar burgers and hot dogs. So uh, Chris and his team have been ex just exceptional, you know, and they've kept the they've kept the peace. I mean, really, everything was fine. If there was a little hiccup, you know, they were right there taking care of it. So in addition to being able to get out in the community, they also helped keep us safe during these events. And so, Chris, thank you. You have just been a light in the community, and I'm just so grateful that you helped us, and I, I hope we can suck you into it again next year. Let's hear it for Chris. Thank you. Kind of for your contract, so you're here. <laughs> <laughs> your contract. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I had one for Dave, but he's not here, so. Uh oh. Or Did someone get this to, to Dave? To another meeting. We'll give it to Ben. Ben will get it to Dave, I'm sure. But anyway, Dave and his crew did a great job cleaning things up. Um, you know, we had one issue when the lights went on in the gazebo. Couldn't figure it out. Dave's team helped us figure that out. So, you know, um, we work really hard at this. The library works really hard. But uh, we're so grateful for the support of uh, the city of Scappoose. And uh, we'll be asking for $20,000, three events for next year, which is small ask and a uh, big delivery. So we're planning on doing all three again for the outdoor festival. We're going to be doing that on June 7th this year, which is a Saturday, um, just like last year. And then for Earth Day, it's uh, April 22nd, but we always do it on the Saturday closest to Earth Day. So I'll figure that out. And then Movies in the Park will be every Friday in August. And right now we're confirmed with the uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice movie and uh, uh, Wild Robot so far. So a couple of great films. If you guys want to suggest films, I, I'd love to hear them. And if I think they're awful, I'll tell you that. Thank you so much for all your help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. More than an award. Okay. Thank you very much. And I, I'm going to say this afterwards, but I hope you guys have all seen the billboard out on the highway. Uh, pushing everybody down to Chapman Landing, Audubon Society. Thank you, JJ, for helping with that. That was great. Thank you. Go ahead. So I've been working with the Audubon Society for a couple of years now. They're called the Bird Alliance of, of Oregon. As those of you that know me know, I'm very concerned about wildlife and our planet. And so I think it's so essential that we uh, do our part. So uh, we were really excited. I was really excited to reach out to them and suggest doing a billboard that would direct people to Chapman Landing, which frankly, is, is a great bird watching spot. And I don't know if you guys know this, but they've actually had two outings out there uh, so far last year, and they want to do more. So they're, they're really excited. They're going to come back and do the events with us again next year. But um, they're just a great organization. It's those kind of organizations that I believe we can partner with to really get a lot of things accomplished in a very small city. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, no more public comment. Anybody online? Okay, we're good. Moving on to the consent agenda today that is November 4, 2024, City Council meeting work session minutes and November 4, 2024, City Council meeting minutes. If you've had a chance to look at the minutes, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor. Council President Miller. I move the council adopt the consent agenda as presented. Motion by Council President Miller to accept the consent agenda. Any seconds? Second. Second by Councilor Holmes. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor state by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, speak of the devil. We have Interim Chief Flewellen up with a special award I think we'd like to hear. Case. We have Sergeant, retired Sergeant Justice Stevenson here. Come up, please, with his uh, lovely wife, if you don't mind. <laughs> I'll give this one to you. I'll start off a little bit. <laughs> so, Sergeant Stevenson started with the Scappoose Police Department in 2019. Um, he's had 20. 29 years of law enforcement experience. Um, Star Seaman has been instrumental to helping this department actually run, especially over the past couple of years. He played a big part in getting our CBA finally signed. Thank you very much for that too as well. And uh, 
One thing I always respect about Star Stevenson, he has no problem telling you his opinions about anything. And uh, he has really helped me become a better leader, and he has done a lot for his police department, and I really can't thank him enough. And now he's going to a little bit greener pastures out there, getting away from scapoos, um, and be able to enjoy the rest of his life and things like that. So um, before we give you the plaque, we did have a couple of customized scapoos uh, coins. Fortunately, when our previous chief took those. However, what I have right here is one of my personal coins from Washington State Patrol that I'd like to give you and say thank you very much. Mayor, if you want to read this off? Yes, I will read it. Thank you, Sergeant Justin Stevenson, for your 29 years of dedication, dedicated service in law enforcement, including your outstanding service to the citizens of Scapoose, Oregon, since 2019. It was an honor working with you, and you were and you wore your badge well. Scapoose Police Department, uh, this August 1st, 2024, uh, 29 years of service. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it was an interesting career. It was a very uh, enjoyable career. Um, definitely glad that I'm out of it at this point, though. It was time. And uh, it's one of those things where we're from Northeastern Oregon and be able to kind of make that move back over and kind of get the full circle of life and kind of go to the next chapter. So it's been uh, it's been a wonderful experience. We lived here in Scapoose for 11 years, and it's uh, been a great community. And uh, we'll still be here for a while, but uh, future will be over there. So, but again, Where in Eastern Oregon? Uh, Pendleton. Mm -hmm. Let's hang up for some spots. <laughs> yeah, let's get a picture here. We'll appreciate it. Scapoose was nice. Yes, absolutely. Go tell Larry hi for us. You photo bombing us. <laughs> Guys. Okay, make sure I'm doing this right. Are we good? Okay, we're moving on to old business three in your book, Ordinance 920. Um, we are on second reading. This is Ordinance 920, an ordinance relating to land land use on remand from Luba, amending the Scapu zoning map, adopting and implementing the hearings officer's final order, and approving the Buxton Ranch plan development, subdivision, conditional use, and sensitive lands development permit. Um, I think we pick up from where we left off. You don't need to have any kind of a report. Okay, so I'm going to read the title for the second time. Ordinance 920, an ordinance relating to land use on remand from Luba, amending the Scapu zoning map, adopting and implementing the hearings officer's final order, and approving the Buxton Ranch plan development, subdivision, conditional use, and sensitive lands permits. The record and hearing on the Buxton Ranch application is closed. Council made a motion for approval and it was seconded during the November 4th council meeting. So at this time, um, does any councilor wish to declare an appearance of bias, ex parte, contact, or conflict of interest regarding this matter? As stated two weeks ago, I'm recusing myself from this. Okay, thank you, Councilor the Friends. So if you want to step out um, and someone will text you when we're done. Thank you, City Manager. Um, does any other person want to declare ex parte contact or bias or conflict of interest? Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Do we need to declare the ex parte contact that we already declared? Again, Lori's not in her head yet. I did check with Ashley on that. She'd prefer you all restate okay. what you said before and in addition to any new. Okay, so I'll go first. And I don't have any new ex parte contact, but I do have the contact that I um, explained uh, previously, and that is uh, Joel Haugen's emails to, I think, that went to all of council. Um, I, don't really, I don't recall actually reading those just because of the issue at hand. Thank you. Uh, and as I stated at the last meeting, um, also received similar emails, friends of the floodplain emails requested that I be removed from the list. Um, also received a text from Joel about a week preceding the last meeting, uh, encouraging me to abstain from a vote and uh, received an email from Mr. Haugen this week or last week, uh, encouraging the same. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I yeah. need to amend um, my ex parte contact. I did receive, I'm, I forgot about it, I did receive the same email that uh, Councilor Holmes just described to you within the last few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm um, also just like 
Councillor Miller, Councillor Holmes, I also received the same type of communication from Joel, and um, I didn't really read it. Okay, thank you. Um, I too, at the last meeting, um, divulged the ex parte with the emails from Joel, um, and I too did receive the newest one within the last two weeks. Um, so I want to disclose that. But seeing that, um, anybody else, does any party wish to challenge any council member's impartiality or legal capacity to participate in this matter? Okay, seeing none, we have left off. We had a motion in a second. So any other discussion? Um, seeing none, I'm looking for a vote. All those in favor of ordinance 920, state by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. All everyone here did say aye. So that ends the second reading um, of that. Do you want to text Andrew? He can come back when ready. Mr. Mayor, just yes. for clarification for the record, can we state who? On, yeah, yes. On council at this time with that. Yes. Is Councilor Holmes with an aye. Correct. Council President Miller with an aye. Councilor Santiago with an aye. aye. And Mayor Joe Backus with an aye. Thank you. Um, I'll give him a minute because we are going to go into a new resolution. And I want Andrew to maybe, if he can get here in time. Um, appreciate all your work on that, Lori. Um, team. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we'll slowly move on here. Um, number four, re new business, resolution 2417, authorizing a loan from Special Public Works Fund approval. Contract Administrator Charlotte Baker with the staff report. Evening. Um, I am here with a resolution related to um, the city's special works Special Public Work Fund, excuse me, uh, loan application through Business Oregon. Um, this is uh, essentially a formality. They require that we um, that we adopt this resolution uh, as drafted by Business Oregon. Um, so I, this is not drafted by me. It's drafted by Business Oregon, and we must uh, uh, adopt it as written in order to receive funding from them. Um, as you may recall, this loan is to help fund the uh, reservoir project that's that's ongoing. Um, and um, part of that, uh, part of receiving the funds is entering into con a contractual agreement with them that is predicated upon the passage of this resolution and also um, a letter of support from our attorney. Um, I've reached out to, to Ashley and she uh, advised me that she would not draft the letter until this had been passed by you all. So um, this is essentially just uh, uh, taking the box, so to speak, to uh, be able to start expending those grant or the loan funds. Thank you. Um, City Manager Bergener, do you have anything to add on that? Um, looks good to you. Yeah, <laughs> nothing out of time. <laughs> Um, Mr. Mayor, Council President, I do have a question. So um, the interest rate here is 4.09 percent, and then um, it says I did read the part about um, that we're taking in disbursements, so so we're not going to be charged interest on the full amount. It's going to be based on the disbursements that we take. Do we have any idea how the disbursements are going to look um, in terms of the timeline? Timeline and amount. Uh, I talked to to Dave about this actually just the other day. We probably won't start spending any of this money until the spring. Um, we'll use some other funding sources that we have, um, and the amount we don't. Dave said he probably he thought we we might spend around two million total. Okay. Um, we're not sure what each individual like each monthly disbursement will look like. We won't really know until I think we get closer to that point. So are we taking two million or two point five in the beginning and starting to pay? When do we start paying? In, when do we start paying the four percent interest? You start paying interest as as you get a disbursement. Let's say we, we request $100,000 because we've just paid um, MEI $100,000 and we'd start paying the interest on that 100000 
it start accruing, but we won't pay on it until the project is complete or we'll start paying on it. Um, with it's we're paying it with um, money from citizens' water bills. I mean, it, we pay with our our our, our uh, account. I mean, our, no. So let me explain yeah. my point, and maybe it'll, yeah. So where I'm going with this is that you know obviously these projects have different milestones, right? And then there's with that comes payments, is what I'm guessing how this is going to work. So are we only taking the amount? Are we taking the amount of money that we need for those milestones during diff at different points to reduce our four percent interest rate? That makes sense. Yeah, it's not going to be all one lump sum. Yeah, uh, it's throughout phases that you take it so you can pay stuff off. Yeah, pay the vendors. I assume so. I, I mean, I, I figured you were doing that, but I was just curious what the amounts were at different durations during the project. But, um, that's good. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I, they'll take it over. I understand your question. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. We'll take money from it over time, and then once it's complete, I would think is when the loan then closes and you start paying back on it at that time. And interest will accrue and while the project is going if you've taken disbursement. Yes, sorry, that is correct. Yeah. You, we won't make our first payment on the loan until it's probably closed. Um, and you're, like you said, you're trying to move, use as much money ahead of time to avoid that, and that some of it's urban renewal money, that's the same project. Right, we're, we're discussing the different options. Uh, we need to start off with our ARPA funds because that does have a deadline to spend those. But then after the ARPA is done, um, we're depending on that time, we might either take the loan proceeds first or use some urban renewal. Um, really the difference will be, I mean, right now we're getting over 5% interest with our local government investment pool. So the, the cost of capital is cheaper to keep the money than to, to not. So we're, we're trending that way right now, but when we actually get to that point, depending where the LGIP gets, we'll, we'll make that decision at that time. We're going to go with the loan or um, the urban rule after ARPA. Um, and this does, uh, it's a resolution. So I'm looking for a motion on the resolution 2417. Mr. Mayor, I move City Council approve resolution 24-17 and authorize the city manager to enter into a contractual agreement with the Special Public Works Fund at Business Oregon in order to finalize the loan for the Keys Road Reservoir Project. I have a motion by Councilor Holmes to approve resolution 24-17 and authorize the city manager to enter into a contractual agreement with the Special Public Works Fund at Business Oregon in order to finalize the loan for the Keys Road Reservoir Project. Any second? Second by Councilor Santiago. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor state by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Appreciate it. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you. Okay. Um, speaking with uh, City Manager Brugner, and I'm looking to possibly, we're looking at canceling December 2nd meeting. We have nothing concrete that has to be covered. Um, it's right after a, a holiday weekend, and so a lot of the every staff report, everything would have to be done a lot earlier than normal. And so I think we're looking for your approval to cancel the December 2nd meeting. <laughs> well, we just don't want to have to come back later. You can change that real quick. I move to, uh, to cancel December 2nd meeting. Thank you. <laughs> Councilor Santiago makes a motion to cancel the December 2nd meeting. Any seconds? Second. Council President Miller seconds. Any more discussion? All those in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. We've got this in the right order. Okay, we are now going into uh, calendar, which um, I have is December, December 2nd, no council meeting. December 12th, EDC meeting at noon. Um, council session Monday, December 16th, council work session at 6 p.m., followed by a council meeting at 7 p.m., parks and rec at 6 p.m. on December 19th. City offices will be closed the 24th and the 25th, and um, in January 1st, offices close. Happy New Year. Um, update, city manager, Mr. Bergener. Uh, nothing major for this time. We do have the department reports that are included um, with the finance report getting a little bit more consolidated, and we still are working with those even further. Last time, there were 21 pages. 
This time we're down to 11, which is fantastic. Uh, working great with Carol. We are, and Kim actually came in today to kind of look at our dashboard. She was mentioning different things she was interested in last time. Um, and even what we're going towards beyond what you see here is a, even a little bit more concise and a little bit more uh, to the point for the, the high level review of the council. We have them separated by general funds, enterprise funds, special revenue funds, your SDC funds and your urban renewal. That will be consistent with the new ones that you'll see next month. Um, any comments? I'm just trying to get this from you. If there's anything that would be that you would like to see on the finance reports that we don't have. Um, like I say, it will be a little bit more. It'll be a little shorter next time. We're really just focusing on the expenses of having materials. Um, will the payroll materials and services capital outlay and transfer separated for your expenditures. It'll have your budget compared to year to date with your percentage of the year. So you can see how we're trending for the year on expenses. Um, it'll also have your cash carryover and at the bottom will have your retained earnings or your also profit loss on each of those funds and uh, departments as well as your remaining cash balance for those departments. Any comment? I would just want to get more feedback so we can get this a little bit more useful for the council and for the public of anything you'd like to see on there or taken away. Well, the one thing, you know, we've, we've talked about throughout my two years is obviously attorney fees and you, you we gave us updates. Um, that is fine to me. I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly where to find them in here. So that's good that you break them down or you let us know because we are trying to keep track of that, especially as we change from attorneys to see how we're doing there. And then also we've, we've heard a lot about consultants. And so, I, you know, I'm able to kind of see, oh, when did we use a consultant? And, and just to get an idea um, how much money we've spent is, is there, um, I mean, is there a way to see it in there? Yeah, I could add uh, like the email I sent you that had the, the trending of our attorney that shows it from over a year ago to now. We could add one for consultant fees. Breaking that down, there's a lot of consultants we're using right now. A little hard. I'm not yeah. sure, but I mean, we could work at trying to come up with something for you. Yeah, I mean, until I know what we're using them for, um, to make sure I was like, oh, we're using this a lot. Maybe we can hire somebody instead. I mean, when we finally get to that, I know we use consultants and we need to, but um and we, the big ones like I, with the master plans those are starting to go away so we may not see the right a little down. yeah i could maybe get a list of consultants whether it's on here just to send you guys so you have a record of those and just whether used for as well um yeah any other questions from the i guess the rest of the department reports we have the police report in there the cdc's and um um, considering that the gel levy failed, we'd like to maybe keep our eye on that just to see if it does change now um, as they start to make changes. We know what their plan is. Do you? I can maybe talk about that. Yeah. Go ahead. Um. For sure, I, I don't know exactly what the sheriff office plan is right now. Um, for us, person just booked somebody in jail yesterday. Um, so with right now, status quo, don't know exactly what the future is going to hold. So with some talk, putting it back on the ballot possibly next year for a third time or going forward. But that's all I have for now. I tell you from personal experience being here yesterday, um, and things haven't changed. Have any different different additional information by just please keep us surprised if there are yes sir and announcements and then with public works as well is there anything you'd like to add or shorten or is this uh, once again this is for the council and for the public just to keep uh both of you apprised of what's happening kind of high level um so if you ever approach the public, kind of know where, where we're at and what we're doing, and as well to give a progress report of the projects we're working on. I like it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mr. Holmes. Yeah, thank you for uh, further simplifying the numbers. I am not necessarily a um, budget numbers person, but though I think the way that you are presenting it um, really does streamline it for myself and I think 
makes it more accessible for the general public. So I do appreciate it. And then um, I guess just, you know, one thing, um, city manager Bergner that we talked about today and would maybe be helpful, like on page 39, um, just to have kind of that progress report of where those really large right. capital projects are. I think, um, you know, having them listed out is really helpful to see all of the things that are happening concurrently, but um, being able to have some sort of indication of kind of where we're at in the process, I think would be helpful for myself and probably also for the public as well. Right. And you're talking about the city specific projects, right? Like mm -hmm. the keys, water reservoir, and yeah. it's kind of like a Gantt chart type timeline or chart up there to. Especially when things might change, such as access and trucks and things that might affect the citizens. The, you've been doing a really good job posting those, getting them out, putting them on our social media that when there are issues, I think everybody's um, done a good job so far. Okay. okay. Well, beyond that, the council uh, attended a great training today. Uh, we met with the Oregon Ethics Commission. They provided a training in St. Helens and uh, about public meetings. So I uh, thought that was well informed, put together. Um, yeah, nothing else at this time, though. Okay. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Since you're here, Lori, you have anything exciting? I have my big info here coming up. Oh, <laughs> coming up get the next. Good. So, yeah. Um, the big one. Other than that, yeah, things are going well in planning. And um, I guess one thing to draw your attention to, and it was in my um, department update as well, is um, we are nearing um, uh, the end of the kind of review for the recertification of the levy. And so the consultants are um, putting together that final um, proposed mapping that will be sent to FEMA for their review. And so once we have those maps in hand, the plan is to coordinate with Columbia County because I'd say the majority of the acreage that's affected is in the county. So we would hold a public open house here. Um, I've offered up City Hall and um, just have a public open house for anyone who wants to attend and kind of see a little presentation on, on those changes that will occur to the floodplain map. Um, again, this is all on the east side of the city. So uh, it's been ongoing for quite some time. CET got involved for a little while because it was affecting some of our employment lands. We got a grant and worked through um, kind of uh, updating the LIDAR modeling for that and uh, making sure all of our public stormwater infrastructure was reflected in their modeling. It did reduce flooding by quite a bit. Um, so we, we want to make sure we're capturing what the, the real risk is of the 100-year flood, not anything in excess of that or, or less than that. So we feel like we're reflecting now what would be more considered like true conditions and um, CET has um, sent a letter a few months back, maybe it's been six, I don't know, <laughs> basically saying that they're satisfied with the additional results um, and the additional analysis that was done and they kind of pulled back from, from having concerns about it. So as soon as we, like I said, you'll see something go out um, probably on um, social media as well once we have kind of that public meeting planned. No, this is a big deal. It's been, like you said, going on for a long time, and and they have to recertify it every so many years. So right. I mean, the longer it's gonna have to be done again soon, if the way it's been going. But yep. this was some big changes. Yes. So it's that it's that final addition on the floodplain map that makes it officially recertified. So we're almost there. Uh, just uh, two more quick updates for me. I did think, um, as a follow up from our last meeting uh, when we talked about committees. I did have opportunity to talk with both the EDC. They had our meeting this last week. We talked a little bit about what the council has been doing, as well as I was able to talk to Michael and JJ on several occasions about the committees. Uh, so we're it's still a work in progress um, with those, but that, that conversation is continuing to go on. And there's been a lot of good information gleaned from both, all those conversations as well from the committee side. Um, from the staff side, we are also put, assembling a, uh, just so you know, a wellness committee is just an operational thing. Uh, the staff seems to be pretty excited about putting some together. If it's a uh, grassroots, not supervised, that they can kind of uh, look at different things to help uh, continue to increase the environment of staff or, you know, whether it's parties or just 
policies that we have to kind of look from that side to give recommendations to supervisors. Uh, so that our first meeting for that will be next week as well, or tomorrow. Great. So. Okay. Anything else to add, Interim Chief Llewellyn? Uh, just a couple things. We have a couple of community events coming up uh, next Monday. We system with the Boy Scouts here, a local lead providing with a merit badge and talk about um, crime prevention, safety, things of that nature. In December, we have your part of a raffle for the Grant Watts Parents Teacher, I believe, organization. Uh, so we'll be dealing with that. And uh, we also be assisting with the Scapoo Spirit, uh, Spirit Christmas Spirit Parade that'll be going on, I believe, the 14th of December. Uh, for myself, uh, this week I'm down in Salem with uh, DPSST going through a management course down there as well. And this week or next week, we plan to start opening up entry level positions for police officers again. We already got a couple already submitted to our department despite it not being open yet. Um, thank you very much, everybody who helped out with the CBA, things like that, which I think helped. And uh, we conducted our first round of sergeant assessment and things like that. Our assessment panel interviews this past Wednesday, we think went uh, pretty well and myself and the city manager will be conducting the last phase to make the final selection um, hopefully next week. And once again, thank you, Mayor, for assisting with that, unless you have anything to add to that. Uh, Just when's your next acting class? Say again. Acting class, I mean. I don't know what you're talking he's about. He's a good actor. Inside joke? Say yeah, inside joke. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, Thank you. That's all. Once again, thank you so much. It was great to have you there Welcome. too as well. So, and that's all I have. Any any questions from the council or anybody else? Well, I have a question. Thank you for your um, reports and numbers here. Where did it go? Um, it's Forty-one, I, Councilor. The, the, so I thought there was some figures and numbers of reports. forty-one. Forty-one. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, comparing to last year, how are we with um, with our activity, law enforcement activity? We, I'm just, how are the, are we getting worse, better? I mean, from last year, what's the trend? I'll have to actually look at the data and provide you a accurate number. I don't want to provide with false information, but it's okay. I can look at that and give it to you in the email if you like to. So, my own personal experience um, compared to last year, we have more officers there, so we have a lot more officers being engaged with more things uh, versus compared to last year. So that's a benefit too. So I would imagine that our activity would have increased um, compared to last year. But without looking at the data from November 2023, I can't say 100% for sure, ma'am. Last time we talked, and uh, we had a conversation of a officer for you be ready for like to yes um yes we do have that officer um recently last week we got with um our, our uh, miss carol to work on some software to help better track the code complaints and violations so that people within the staff can actually look and see what's going on and talk with one he's part-time so he's not a full fte a full-time employee but he is out there working you know speaking work on thursdays and fridays we're going to be adding that to this report Ken, I have no problem doing that. If that's something we want to start looking at from the council. So. Great, thank you. No problem, man. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Friends? Nothing tonight. Thank you. Councilor Holmes? Nothing for me. Thank you. Councilor Santiago? Um, I just want to just give a little uh, updates on what EDC met. Um, like uh, city manager said that uh, they talked about the strategic plan and Still a long conversations. Um, I, from my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, but I asked them if they would have their recommendations to council by end of December, and they said no, unfortunately, not ready. But they're still working on their goal and strategic plan. Um, Paul Valgo did uh, mention a few things that are going on. If we haven't, if you guys don't know about, Keep It Local is having a holiday sweepstake. Um, they. On November 30th, for Small Business Saturday, um, we have a bazaar at the John Gum building, and that's their new building there. And, uh, they're going to have different uh, also classes, like e-commerce series. Uh, on December 10th, they're going to have news, beer, and holiday cheer there, I believe. So I, I hope I caught that right. 
um, projects advice. They said that the, uh, I think there's three runner ups and we're one of the three. So that's good so far. Um, the Acadia project is still moving on. And let's see, they talked about recreation, uh, recreation grant from Travel Oregon. Um, 50 year plan could resume 2025, right? That's kind of like the. So it's going to, we're going to actually come to council um, on December 16th. So next month, because um, we really need to check in and get some direction on a few questions we have, and then it will go back to the committee um, probably January, February. And um, and then just really quite, cool, I thought uh, Mike was actually voting as public power council. So um, I, yeah, just an update and. Um, be safe out there. It's getting ugly. Yeah, appreciate it. Newly elected. Congratulations, uh, Council President Miller. Oh uh, yeah, just uh, <laughs> a few things. Um, as we alluded to several times during our meeting tonight, uh, we, as in uh, Councilor Holmes, uh, Mayor Bacchus, uh, Mayor Santiago. Um, Sorry, Taya, you got a <laughs> <laughs> It's not even that late. I like that sound. <laughs> yeah, right? Future. <laughs> right. Councilor Santiago, sorry. Um, City Manager Brigginger and Ms. Baker back there all attended the uh, government, Oregon Government Ethics Commission um, training today. And thank you to the City of St. Helens for facilitating that. It was a uh, good training. Um, I did attend the November 13th uh, County Board of Commissioners meeting. Uh, just two things to note really quick. Uh, the commissioners are now over in the John Gum building, so don't do what I did the other day and go to talk to them um, next to the DA's office. They're not there anymore. You can knock on the door all you want. Nothing <laughs> happens. Learn that. Um, and then uh, the other thing um, that I thought was interesting, too, is uh, it seems like it, it's really, really slow because it is, but the broadband project. Um, the county issued a broad, what they called a broadband operator RFP. And uh, if, I, if my notes are correct here, only uh, two submitted proposals. And the one that won was uh, RSG Telecommunications, and they have offices in both Canada and the United States. Now, what they are basically tasked with doing their scope right now anyway, is uh, basically just to assist the county with grant applications and then also um, do a uh, actual network design. Great. Thank you. Um, real quickly, I did. I did thank JJ. If you coming in from St. Helens, there is a really big billboard banner there directing people down to Chapman Landing. I think that's great that Audubon Society paid to do that. Um, I did uh, had the pleasure of working with. Uh, thank you to Joel Haugen and Pete McHugh for putting on the Mike Sheehan Memorial Chess Tournament this last Saturday. It was the first annual um, at the high school. Um, that was good. And fortunately, I was beat by a preschooler. So um, unfortunately, there's pictures to prove it. So that's not good. But I want to thank you for that. Um, yes, we did do the training today. Um, right around the corner, Whoville opens December 1st, Sunday night. Um, and Sunday, it's open several days. I will be on Coin News next Monday and the, talking about city things that have happened here in the last year. Um, and we do have a visit from Santa on December 2nd, right here at Heritage Park. Um, he will be coming at 6 p.m., so get the word out. Um, that's all I have for tonight. Um, we are now moving into our next item, uh, NFIP pre-implementation compliance measure update. This has been a big, long-going FEMA uh, National Floodplain Insurance Program, and um, we have some information to give tonight and, and then we're going to go into executive session and get some legal counsel regarding it. And then we'll probably come back out into open session and discuss more. So to join tonight by community development director, Lori Oliver Joseph with the staff report. Perfect. Thank you, mayor and council. Yes. So you've probably heard about this, um, sort of on your own, but I wanted to bring back some information to you to update, uh, you all on where we're at. And to get a general consensus, if um, you are in favor of the approach we would like to take. So uh, cities across Oregon 
uh, have been asked to report to FEMA by December 1st of this year on which pre-implementation compliance measure we will be choosing. This is to address a lawsuit against FEMA a number of years back. Um, subsequently, there was a biological opinion issued uh, by the National Marine Fisheries Services in 2016. Uh, and they essentially uh, found through this lawsuit uh, that FEMA's rules um, threaten takings of certain endangered uh, species, so ESA listed species. And in Oregon, there's a number of salmon species and then the, um, the resident killer whale. And so obviously not so much the whale here, but we have, we have salmon in Scappoose Creek. So the pre-implementation compliance measures really at the end of the day are meant to ensure compliance between the NFIP, the National Flood Insurance Program, and the ESA, Endangered Species Act. Um, I'll go back and just to say, so that we all understand what we're talking about here, um, these new rules and regulations once implemented would apply from the top of bank of a body of water, in our case, the creek, um, out 170 feet, uh, and then anything also within that area that's also in the 100-year floodplain. So anything outside of that, let's say the floodplain only reaches 50 feet from the top of bank, then it's just that 50 feet that we're talking about here. It wouldn't apply to the remainder of the riparian zone if it's outside of the floodplain. And that's because the NFIP only applies to floodplain. It doesn't govern anything outside of the floodplain. So just to be clear, um, that that's the area we're talking about, the new regulations applying to not the entire floodplain. Um, I did mention here, just under issues, um, just for my own purposes and for you know information for you as well, to look at roughly, this is a rough guesstimate based on some GIS information I pulled. Where it looks like it might, these new regulations might affect roughly 29 acres of land currently in city limits and about 10 in the UGB, but not in city limits yet. And that's just looking at parcels with future development potential. Like if it's, um, you know, a two acre lot and it has a house on it, then obviously there might be some future development potential. So we, you know, included that part of the land. But if it's land that's 6,000 square feet, and there's already a house and a garage and everything on it, that did not it captured in this figure. So just so you know what we're looking at here. Um, in terms of what the um, Hickam's hope to do basically is to have that ESA compliance prior to FEMA finishing their process. So in 2023, uh, FEMA began evaluating the proposed changes to the NFIP that were outlined in the implementation plan. And they are currently doing that through um, looking at it um, and environmental impact statements. They will not complete that process until probably 2026 and it will not be codified like in the federal register and in the official NFIP um, codes until 2027 we're thinking. So again, pre-implementation. FEMA is telling cities, you have to do these things, even though we're not done with our process quite yet, we want you to address this. Um, typically, in terms of what gets adopted into our development code, um, we assume then that that's in compliance with NFIP policies, right? So it gets vetted by the state, by DLCD. Um, there's model floodplain ordinance that comes out, the city's adopted. There can be changes, but we can't go lower than their minimum standards. You can go above their minimum standards, which our city has. Um, and so FEMA will look to update their NFIP minimum standards to account for um, making sure it's compliant with the ESA. All that in a nutshell, we have three options to pick from. And we've outlined them here. Um, option one is no development in the floodplain. We're not recommending that um, for a few reasons. 
it would obviously result in loss of property values to the homeowners. Um, it also would require the, the city to send measure 56 notices to all affected landowners. It would essentially prohibit what is currently a use on their property to be able to develop in the floodplain. Um, that would mean that the city may be liable to pay those homeowners a measure 56 claim, basically compensating them for the loss in their property value. Again, we're not recommending that. We do have, like I said, that number of acres. Um, so we would want people to still be able to develop their property, but in accordance with the rules so that we're still showing compliance with the ESA. Um, compliance with the ESA essentially means no net loss to floodplain standards or floodplain um, um, benefits essentially. And so it's looking at undeveloped space, which they're essentially classifying as the level the ground is at now and then the base flood elevation. Anything between those two places is undeveloped space. And if you build something there, then you have to compensate for it somewhere else. We're also looking at impervious surfaces, so compensating for any new impervious surfaces and then also uh, tree removal. So that those are the three things you'd have to mitigate for if you did uh, develop in the floodplain. So the second option is model floodplain ordinance. We do recommend this, but with revisions. Um, the current floodplain model ordinance language came out in late July. And then FEMA has been doing a series of webinars with um, local jurisdictions throughout Oregon. And just based on the feedback from those webinars that they've been holding, they're already changing the model floodplain ordinance. So you see it right now as a little bit of a moving target, right? Like they're still working through kind of what um, their final language might look like. We do still suggest this path. Um, this will essentially be kind of a prescriptive path. It will be, it will outline exactly what needs to be done. It will outline um, the mitigation required. And so, and we'll talk about the, the third option in a second, permit by permit, but there would be no additional studies required of an applicant if they were just to go ahead and uh, apply the plain language of the floodplain ordinance. So that's, a reason that I like it. Um, there are still issues with it. Um, number one, it is not a clear and objective standard. Um, this is really important for housing in Oregon. There has to be at least one path forward that's clear and objective uh, in relation to any housing development. Um, this is something that FEMA moved forward so quickly with that DLCD did not come to the table um, and they were not able to comment on the model floodplain ordinance yet. So that's something we still expect to see. Um, it will take time for the new floodplain ordinance language to number one, stop being a moving target and then number two for the city to uh, go through the adoption process with that. Uh, we have also heard that Again, this is an interim compliance measure, so it will change again once they actually codify the changes into the NFIP. And so we would likely need to uh, update the model floodplain ordinance language like after 2027 um, or just prior to it. Again, FEMA has said though that those updates are likely to be very minor, so I don't see that as an issue. Um, lastly, option three, permit by permit approach. We also recommend this with revisions. Um, this requires that the, the applicant complete a habitat um, assessment and mitigation. FEMA did release like a guidance document on this. It is very technical. Um, we heard during the webinars that really this mitigation guide was put together more for the Puget Sound area that does have a lot more um, they just, they're in a different category, right? Like they have, um, a different set of circumstances than Oregon does. And so 
they realized that this really, really, really was overkill. And so we're expecting quite a few revisions to this document as well um, to really simplify it to be a lot more specific to Oregon communities. But what I think our, our approach or our thought process here um, is to give applicants the ultimate flexibility and to let them, basically when we write our ordinance to also write in the option to do the permit by permit approach if they want to. Um, for smaller projects, we wouldn't want someone to have to do the permit by permit approach because you know, hiring um, a specialist to do the report for, for a relatively small project it might not pencil. In that case, they could just go by the straight language in the in the model code and and know exactly what they need to do. Um, if it's a rather large project, it might it might make sense for them to go through that more extensive process. If it ends up getting them more of the project they're looking for and it still meets the criteria of you know no net impact. So um, let's see. So the city attorney um, has advised, however, that any of the three options, even if we decide to just not allow floodplain development at all, um, and we talk about this a lot in land use, it has to be codified in the development code. So I think what, what happened really is FEMA understood that the model floodplain ordinance must be adopted before cities could enforce it, but they sort of failed to realize that um, the other approaches also need to be codified. Um, we say this all the time that it depends on, it's the goalpost rule, right? Whatever's on the books at the time an applicant submits their application is all we can ask of them. And this is no different. So FEMA just, they didn't have the understanding of Oregon land use law. Um, and so it kind of puts a lot of cities in a weird spot right now. Um, we do have upcoming deadlines, December 1st, again, communities must inform FEMA of their chosen pick em. Um, January 31st, uh, communities must begin to collect data for floodplain permits. There's a number of different items they're going to start collecting information on that we need to report back to them on. Now, because we are not going to have anything codified um, before that date, uh, we Basically, we'll just communicate back to FEMA what our plan is, what our timeline for approval is, what our attorney is recommending to us. And FEMA has basically said, we just need you to communicate. We need to know what your plan is, and we need you to build your record. We need to know where you're at, what your concerns are, et cetera. So um, that's the plan um, to just let them know that we're moving forward with adoption of the ordinance and probably, and I'd like to hear your feedback as well, but probably also giving them two options, not just one. So again, staff's recommendation is to take this hybrid approach to allow both options, um, but to work through this at a reasonable pace so that we're making sure that FEMA has stopped making changes um, the DLCD has reviewed this for clear and objective standards. Um, yeah, and just to roll this into our, pro I, we think we can still make this work with our 50 year plan project, but knowing that we can easily break this off at any point if we need to, if timelines aren't working out or, or things are changing, we can certainly break this off into a separate adoption process. Um, ben? Do you have anything? Well, no, we just have the memo that we could review before we, the consensus. And the yeah, session. we did. Yes, correct. So you did get some information. Um, we could go into executive session and, and discuss that and then come back out. Do you guys feel that you want to go into executive session and discuss this exempt public record? Um, I think I need to declare a potential conflict of interest. Um, so my family owns several acres that are in the UGB that also are in the floodplain as well. So to get a little more, I mean, unless if, unless you're like 100% ready and don't need any more information, we're going to go into executive session, discuss a legal document that our council has given us, and then we'll come back out and discuss it again, open record. Um, 
to just understand this too, this, I mean, this all kind of results not around flood so much as rate of kill on endangered species animals. Is that correct? I mean, it's, it's regarding. It's habitat for aquatic, um, uh, aquatic habitat and fish and the whale. Building um, within, I mean, the whole mm -hmm. idea of changing in those, those requirements are to save the endangered species that within those. Um, Correct. Just want to understand that. Um, okay. So if we, so what's the process here? We're going to go into executive session, get more information, then come out and make a decision. It would be to discuss the legal memo that our attorney sent out. Uh, so that is a correction to the agenda. I'm sure Joe had mentioned that. Um, it was, our attorney is not going to be here, but we have her memo, which is under a different, it's under section F not H of the executive session, allowing public records, um, records, not public. You're not asking for an official vote. We're just no. kind of for a no. thumbs up, a recommendation from us. If there's a consensus of what plan they should be proceeding with. Right. Maybe with talking about this legal memo, understanding a little more, maybe we can come out and all agree that that plan sounds like the best plan of attack. Yeah, and if you don't have any questions about the legal memo, we don't need to do the executive session either. Um, you all received that from the attorney, uh, attorney client privilege. Uh, really, it's just there are risks to any choice you go. I mean, there, this is a lose-lose situation. No matter what we do, there is a risk that could have potential litigation against the city. Can I get, I'm having email issues. Can I get, I wasn't able to get it on my tablet. I brought some extras, so. And then on the conflict of interest, if we do go into executive session, we'll take that in. Um, and Tyler, we're not, you know, if we were adopting floodplain code right now, maybe there would be a concern. But just as I do appreciate you mentioning that, and I, I think this is just for staff to get a direction to to relay to FEMA by December first, but knowing that if more information comes out once the model floodplain ordinance does get released and stuff, we can always come back. We can change our mind if we want to. They just want to know which direction are we planning to head in, basically. Right, with the land use process. Give us a thumbs up or not, that's fine. Ms. Kelton, I agree with you, Lori. Well, you, everything, thank you for reporting, because sure. it made lots of, lot of sense for me. Um, and just like you said, it's a moving target. And last time you mentioned at the EDC briefly, yeah. um, it was like, I want you to make a, a decision with not all that information. Not all the information. Yeah, right. exactly. So I think staying as flexible as possible. Right. I think that's our, that we should go. Um, and if it's a hybrid combination, and I'm just wondering what, I haven't read what the attorney said, but um, I think it, Whatever that option is, mm -hmm. be as flexible as possible. That's okay. So, do we feel that we'd like to discuss this letter memo and come back out, or do we feel we have enough? We can give our directions with even without it. I think I probably have questions. Okay. Um, and are you good to stay in? Everyone else is good to stay in the meeting. Okay. Um, we're now going to go into executive session ORS 192.6602-F. I put, I put it wrong on the on the agenda as H, so we're correcting as F to, to discuss exempt public records from our legal counsel. Um, it allows us to meet in executive session. Representatives of the news media and designated staff shall be allowed to attend the executive session. All their members of the audience are asked to leave the room. Representatives of the news media are specifically directed not to report on any of the deliberations during the executive session, except to state the general subject of the session as previously announced. No decision may be made in an executive session. At the end of the executive session, we will return to open session and welcome the audience back in the room, and we will open it back up and, and discuss a little more. Um, no, I don't have a set time. Um, Um, every five to 10 minutes and see if we're back open. <laughs>